You can only believe one thing at a time. You have to make this choice. You can either have home prices drop by 40% for people to afford them, or people are going to get a 40% increase in their pay. One of the others, which is the more likely event? I'm here just to tell you what math dictates. Math doesn't care about your feelings, I always say. It is what it is. is what prime rate is right now. The last time that we saw this was around the year 2000. But around the year 2000, property prices were sitting around 250,000. Today, they are a million dollars higher than that, 1.25. So how much would property prices have to come down to match what the salaries used to be? Remember that home prices are only a result of the salary with the interest rate. Those are the only two. So if we can trace back the last time that we had the interest rate at this point to seeing 250, yes, salaries have gone up. But the question is, has salaries gone up five times what they were? We're going to be looking at some fun data today, you guys. I got a lot prepared for you. So hopefully that you're going to have a good day. Let's check out this right now. This is the average price in Toronto over time. Now it goes all the way back to 2000. If we take a look at 2000 and we look up at this little corner up on this top corner up here, pay attention to what the prices were up here. It says that the prices for a condominium was 147,000, but a detached property was only $250,000. 250 for a detached property. Unbelievable. And now you can see right here, it says that average home prices are sitting at 1.1, but an average detached property, my friends, all the way up at 1.4 million. A detached property that's going back was that same rate. Now let's take a look at the mortgages because I think this is a big telling sign. If we take a look at how the mortgages were just many years ago, let's take a look at how those were reacting. All right. So as we know right now, well, this is a load of malarkey. They haven't updated it yet, but 6.4, we're hitting closer to 7% right now in 2023. But if you drag your way back, look at this, all the two percenters all through the 2010s, 1.9 in 2009. This isn't prime, right? This is the mortgage rates. We have to go back all the way to the year 2000 before we see anything even close to that, right? 7.2%. So when we go take a look at the prices and see that in 2000, a detached property was 250,000. You can't make this stuff up. So this is where the lag effect is going to come back and bite people. Am I saying that property prices are going to drop all the way down to 250000 No, of course not. People's salaries are higher than that right now. So that's not going to happen. But it's very, very interesting for us to see. But let's try to see, put some sense to it. In the past year, in the past 12 months inside of Toronto, property prices have increased by 8.7%. They have recovered an enormous amount of money from 980,000 up to 1.1. So we have our June numbers out. If you guys follow our channel, you know that we have we're putting out the June numbers before even the Canadian Real Estate Association did. But these numbers are going to continue getting affected by high interest rates. But Let's take a look at, is it everywhere? What's happening to the days on market? Days on market, again, they're going up. They're going the wrong direction, which is something that we're not really surprised about. Sales to asking ratio, which is uh, what do we list the property? Is it going way over what people were expecting? Again, this is being affected as well. It went from 105% all the way down to 104%. Also, if we take a look at the uh, Canadian Real Estate Association, they finally, finally released all of their numbers. So the biggest ones that people normally ask us about are Vancouver and Toronto. If you guys have some specific ones you want me to take a look at, let me know. But you can start to see in the Toronto one how it's dipping off. It's slowing down. Of course, if you look at my information, you could see it a lot clearer with my info, how the property prices have dropped from 1.127 to 1.111. So what is that? They dropped 10,000 bucks. So when we're looking at the big number, you can see it just slightly ticking off on the corner, but not massively. So those are the huge markets, right? Uh, Of course, some people want to talk about Hamilton. Some people want to talk about Guelph. Maybe we can talk about Edmonton and take a look at them now that we have the June numbers in. But you should be able to see a pattern here, especially here in Hamilton. You could see it in Toronto. You could see how they're curling over. They're curling and flattening off. That trend of going up 
is not going to stick around for long. So one thing, uh, we have a lot of investors on our channels. So a lot of people want to invest in Ontario. Uh, we also have the guideline that just came out in the past couple of weeks that Ontario is only going to be able to raise the rent on people by 2.5% next year for 2024. This has a lot to do. Again, it has to have been built and first occupied before 2018. But this is important for all of our landlords to know. If we try to look at our rates right now, this is just an example of one that we have in Toronto. Royal Bank of Canada in Canada at 7%, 7.09. So if we take a look at normally, the rates are still inverted. That is a big problem. Big, big problem. Because when you always have to pay for a security blanket of the fixed rate. But look at what happened just at the end of last year. Fixed rates flattened off and variable shot to the moon. As the banks are trying to sucker you into going to a fixed rate long mortgage to guarantee that your rate is going to be low. Check out that. They're willing to give you a seven-year fix at 6.4%, which I think that you would be crazy to take, but that's just my opinion. I'm not a mortgage broker. You guys know I sell properties. So if we take a look at the states and see how the states are behaving, they're in a very similar light. So if we take a look at just in, in the past one year, we can see that the rates are hitting all-time highs now up to 7%. We're seeing rates very, very high in the States, and they are matching what we're seeing here in Canada at 7%. So big problems. So if we take a look at the mortgage rates overall and see how it's going to affect our payments, if we had a mortgage rate of 2% last year on 500000 it would be a $2,000 payment. But look at this. If you went to today's prime rate at 72 and you had a $500,000 mortgage, your payment would be at $3,600 from 2100. We're almost doubling the rate. According to Statistics Canada, so far, the number of people who have refinanced their mortgages, they're up 30% as per Stats Canada. But we're expecting, they warned, Stats Canada warned, it's going to be 40% on average for people for their mortgage payments to go up. So then comes our big problemo. If we are at 7.2%, how much would a property have to go down to compensate for that? Generally, it's around 40%. So let's try something out. Let's try 300,000. There you go. So property prices would have to drop 40% for the payment to stay the same. For the payment to go from 2% up to 7.2%, your property price would have to drop from 500000 to 300000 just to maintain the same payment. So you can only believe one thing at a time. It's like a, a kid. You have to make this choice. You can either have home prices have to drop by 40% for people to afford them, or people are going to get a 40% increase in their pay. One of the other. So you tell me which is the more likely event. I'm here just to tell you what math dictates. Math doesn't care about your feelings, I always say. It is what it is. So what do you think is going to happen? I'd love to know. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you think home prices are going to drop or do you think people are going to get a huge increase in their pay? I already know which one I think. I'm curious to know what you guys think because I'm pretty sure that we got some pain that is coming in the market. Let me share something with you because these are the winners and losers for you moving forward. Who is going to lose? The people who are going to lose are people in McMansions, in the massive properties, and big cities. And by big cities, I mean cities over a million people. If you're over a million people, this is Toronto, this is New York, this is California. They're all going to suffer the largest losses of that. But if we're looking at entry-level units, and so this is our one bedrooms, buy a subway somewhere, not the sandwich, but transit. <laughs> Cities under a million, specifically under like 750,000, are going to be doing much, much better overall. Keep watching for this stuff, you guys, because this is going to continue. Unfortunately, we are mid-process right now because <laughs> there's a lot more to come. So this is what we do. But we do a lot of this when we're working with our clients to help them sell their properties. If they're on the fence of trying to decide if they are going to sell their property or if they're not going to sell their property, some of them just call me straight up and say, Dave, we need to sell our property. We need to sell it right now. We need your team to come help us. They've already made up their mind. But some people are kind of on the fence and they're like, well, should I or shouldn't I? And I'm not in the business to tell you if you are or not. But if you have specific questions that can help guide you with what we're seeing in the market, since 
we're talking to so many clients who are dealing with their properties every day. It's very, very consistent. It doesn't matter what property type people are in. If they're a one bedroom condo, if they're in a detached property, or if they're in a McMansion, everyone is feeling the squeeze of this interest rates as it's biting them. So anybody, anybody who has been over leveraged at all are suffering right now. Anybody. Anyway, this is what the main takeaways for you is the last time that we hit those rates was 2000. 2000 was the last time that we've had rates that started with the seven. 2000. <laughs> Unbelievable. So if you go back to what the prices were in 2000, uh, detached property was only sitting at 250,000, which is ridiculous. $250,000 right here. Up in this right corner, take a look at that right corner. 250000 when interest rates are 7%. So the only reason that home prices went up was because interest rates went down. Our interest rates went down for 40 years. So just please, if you did have time, I would love it if you would just go to a mortgage comparison calculator. Please do that and then just try out the numbers and see what will happen. You're going to see that home prices have to go down 40%. Will they actually... Drop 40%? No, no, no. They're going to start money printing way before that, you guys. As soon as they get inflation to their target, they're going to go, we won. And as soon as they do that, they're going to start printing money like they always do. So you know what? I would just question things all the time. If we want to look at the CPI that they're mentioning right now, guys, they started to raise rates when? They started to raise rates at the beginning of 2022. So when they started to raise rates, my question to you is why did interest rates still keep going up and up and up and up and wasn't slowing down at all till July? Why? Because there's a lag. It takes time for the interest rates to actually have an effect. Come on, nothing happens instantly. So as they keep raising rates, look at this. Now it's coming down and down and down and down and down. The problem is the CPI common is still at 5.2%. So if the common inflation is at still at 5.2, they got a lot of more work to do, which is why they're probably going to have to keep up with whatever the states are doing. The states, and it looks like a 96.1% chance, they're going to raise it to five and a half, which... I think is a very, very good reason. Like I always say, this is not a political channel. We never want to be left or right. What I want everybody to do is use logic and reason. And if we use logic and reason, math, God forbid eh, that we use math, use math, logic, reason, and follow the money and make smart moves. Because if you don't, you're going to get hurt. Now, this is the crazy thing is the number one thing that I see people do that hurts them is not do anything. So most people are like scared deer in the middle of the highway just with their eyes blinking and they don't know what to do. So sometimes not doing anything is, is good. I mean, if you're lost in the woods, just choosing a direction and running is insane, right? You got to just stop running and sit still. But in this case, a lot of people over the past year have been frozen. I don't know. I don't know. Last spring, I said to people to sell. And they're like, I don't know. I'm going to wait and see. They lose 100,000. I don't know. I'm going to wait and see. Lose another 100,000. I'm going to wait and see, lose another hundred. You know, our friends in Oakville down 500,000. Some are down over a million. We were talking about one condo that's up on uh, Adelaide, you know, the old Trump hotel. The property went from 2.5 million down to 1.5 million. Just like that. Bam. What is that? Like a 40% drop? And it's still not selling. So the bigger the price is, the bigger the fall is going to be. But that indecision, that not moving is probably the thing that hurts the, the most people. So to me, just be curious, ask questions, right? Ted Lasso, right? Ask questions, be curious, dig into it. Don't just take for like one government, Canada, United States, Europe, whatever. Oh, guys, we have it all under control. Inflation isn't even a real thing anymore. And so I feel like we're getting gaslit all over the world because their inflation numbers that they're telling people, they're like, guys, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. But we are looking at it going, the cost of everything is to the moon. How do we get through this? And I mean, if we go back just a couple stories, well, I know what they're planning to do. On May 8th, did you guys see on any news anywhere, Bank of Canada launches public consultations on a digital dollar. Please go to the Bank of Canada and look at that. It's not on any news. So they want to use a digital dollar or a CBDC. That's coming. The United States starts it August 1st, the Fed Now program. So this is going to be what's coming. So whether or not you believe it's coming, you can't dispute that. It's over 90% of the world's GDP is looking into CBDC. So we can't really argue whether it's coming. What you can argue is like, will it be a good thing? Will it be a bad thing? That, that's, I think, the larger question here. 
And that's actually not very hard either because CBDCs are, are two ways. There's good and bad. There's nothing that's all evil or all good. There's always pros and cons with everything, right? And so with the CBDC, you're not going to be able to steal money. You know, you're not going to, you're going to have to pay all your taxes. There's going to be less dodgy stuff that's out there. So more tax revenue coming in. You know, if you're honest, you're not going to lose. We never want to do anything illegal in any way. So, I mean, that's a good thing, but it also has the power to be bad. Just think of all of the dictators in the world that have ever existed. They would like foam at the mouth thinking about the opportunity that they could actually control everybody from a computer. Crazy. All right, you guys, I wish you the very best. If you have any questions, if you're thinking of selling your property for any reason, that's what we specialize in. You can go to sellhire.ca where you can sell your home for more money, faster and less hassle. You do it. It's a free consultation with me for 30 minutes if you want me to look into what we can do for you to help you sell your property. All right, you guys, please like this video. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll talk to you soon.